starring Tommy Rettig as Jeff Miller. Jan Clayton as his mother, Ellen. George Cleveland as Gramps. And, of course, Lassie. Hi. Got a flat tire? No. Some dopey kid knocked it down. The sport got bent. It was against the spokes and the wheel won't turn. When I get home, maybe Gramps will hammer it out or bend it with a crowbar. Hold it steady. chance you get, have someone take that wheel off and line up the forks. Otherwise, she'll wobble. Gramps will do it. Do you live around here, mister? No. Didn't think so. I know mostly everybody lives around here. I'm in for the Miller farm. You are? That's where I live. I'm Jeff Miller. This is Lassie. You can work for my Gramps? Well, I guess so. County agent sent me up. Gee, that's swell. What's your name? Uh, Pete. Uh, Pete Barnum. Glad to know you, Pete. You'll like it on the farm. There's good fishing in the lake right across the meadow. And every Saturday, Mom makes ice cream. And we have it with pie on Sunday. Say, can you ride a bike? Sure. Well, you pedal, and I'll sit on the handlebars. It's only a short way up the road, OK? OK. Here we go. My Gramps. Glad to see you. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Miller. Pete Barnum, county agent, sent me up. Uh -huh. He's the one who fixed my bike for me, Gramps. The fork was bent, and he straightened it out with his hands. Well, you run in and get your milk. See you later, Pete. <laughs> nice kid. Don't come no better. Bring your stuff in here. <laughs> Got another hand coming up in the morning. Got one cot and that straw mattress. Uh, guess the one comes first gets the cot, eh? <laughs> Been doing farm work long? A while. What part of the country you come from? East. Gosh, I ain't been east myself in 20 years. What part of the east? Different parts. Ain't much of a talker, are you? You looking to hire a field hand or a talker? Well, now, I... Uh... If you're looking to hire a talker, you got the wrong man, Mr. Miller. Well, it seems to me the man that's doing the hiring's got a right to ask a few questions. Sure. You got a right to ask, and I got a right not to answer. Touchy, ain't you? All I want to know is what part of the East you come from. No harm in that. I'm sorry if I bothered you. Hello. Thank you for fixing Jeff's bicycle. That's all right. Pete's awful strong, Mom. Oh, but he's ten times stronger than Higgy's father. Higgy's father played college football. Well, I better be getting along. Where are you going? Back to town. Why? Jeff said you came up here to help with the harvest. Uh, I did, but... Well, I changed my mind. Why, Pete? Oh, one of those things. Well, you can stay for supper at least. It's a long walk back to town, especially on an empty stomach. Please, Pete. Okay. Thanks. You can wash up in the kitchen. I live and work in a city that never sleeps. I'm the vice president of production for a printing company in Manhattan. So how do I wind down after a long day at the office? My thing's Magnum. It just makes me smile. I have the whole collection, all eight seasons. It's pretty cool to have something from Mr. Magnum himself in the house. I'm Peter Fleming, and I am the ultimate fan of Magnum P.I. 
Like us on Facebook and tell us how you get cozy. Are there places around your home where you wish you had a light, but you don't? Hi, Anthony Sullivan here for the Light Angel, the motion-activated LED light that sticks up in seconds and goes practically anywhere. It's like a guardian angel for your home that lights up the way for you, your family, and friends. Light Angel's weather-assisted adhesive sticks to practically anything. It's perfect for lighting up a porch, making a pool safer, and lots more. The Light Angel tilts back and forth so you get the perfect amount of light exactly where you want it. It swivels 360 degrees so you can light up almost anything. Stick it up by the front door. Use it by the back door or a side entrance. It can even light up a shed. The Light Angel is the first one to see you coming and makes a great garage light. The secret's the technologically advanced motion detector that automatically activates the light whenever a human, pet, or automobile crosses its path. Your home is far less likely to be broken into with a motion sensor light. That's why we recommend Light Angel to our residents. It stays cool to the touch and you can even use it indoors to brighten up a closet that doesn't have a light. And it's great under a sink or in tight spaces. Light Angel's seven LED bulbs will stay bright for 100,000 hours. Use four AA batteries, stick up with no tools, and turns off after 60 seconds. Even when the power goes out, you can depend on the Light Angel to be your guardian angel. You could spend a fortune on a motion sensor light and you need tools to install it. Or you could call or click now and get the stick up motion activated light Light Angel for $12.99. As part of this special offer, you can double the value. You can also get our best-selling old Brooklyn Lantern, the vintage-style lantern with powerful LED technology. Light Angel, just $12.99. Call now for this amazing TV-only offer. Call 1-800-771-1275. But hurry, and you can get an amazing second Light Angel and old Brooklyn Lantern with your order. Call 1-800-771-1275. That's 1-800-771-1275. Would you like another piece? Me? No, not you. I didn't think so. <laughs> Pete? Uh, no, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> oh, please don't bother. I'm pretty good at washing dishes. Pete and me will do it, Mom. I must be hearing things, but I could have swore that Jeff offered to do dishes. <laughs> <laughs> You really don't have to, Pete. I'll be on my way as soon as I'm through. Thanks for a fine supper. You're quite welcome. He seems like a nice boy. Huh? Pete seems like a nice boy. Why is he leaving? Beats me. Didn't he say anything? No. He came here to work, didn't he? Huh? Oh. Dad, come on. Either listen to me or read your paper. You can't do both. <laughs> You're asking me a lot of questions and can't answer. I don't know why he's leaving. I asked him what part of the East he come from, and he got huffy and walked out. That's all? That's all. I got one three pounds. Grant's got one five and a half, though. We're all finished, Mom. My, that was fast. And we didn't even break one. <laughs> Mom, look at Pete's muscle. I'd rather look at the sink. Hasn't been this clean in weeks. <laughs> Pete, if you don't want to do farm work, you can stay and do dishes for me. Well, he's gonna stay. He said so. I said maybe. We'd very much like to have you. You're sure Mr. Miller still wants me? I think so. Do I have to answer a lot of questions? You won't have to answer any questions. All right. I'll take your bedroll to the barn. You made Jeff very happy. He likes you. He's a nice kid. Glad you think so. If there's anything you want, just let me know. Thanks, ma'am. Guess I'll turn in. Good night. Just open it for you. Sure. Thanks, kid. I guess I'd better go. Good night. Wait a minute. Ever see one of these? What is it? Builds up the arm and shoulder muscles. Want to try it? Go ahead, try it. Hold your elbows out like this. I can't do it. 
sure you can. Wait. Now try it with both hands. <laughs> See, you're doing fine. Pretty soon you'll be able to do it with one hand, like this. Will I ever have muscles like yours? Sure, if you work at it. Is that how you got your muscles? Is it Pete? Time to turn in. You want to go fishing in the morning? Your grandfather's not paying me to go fishing. Well, I mean early, before work, six o'clock. Are you up at six o'clock? All right, send her over to wake me. Okay. Good night. I hope you sleep good. Thanks. Jeff. I'm sorry about the bedroll. Oh, that's all right. Good night, Pete. Good night. Galway. County agent sent me up. Put your stuff in the barn. I'll be out there in a few minutes. Okay. Would you like some breakfast? No, ma'am. I ain't in town. Ugly looking brute. Well, you don't hire field hands for their looks, you know. <laughs> Well, I'll put him away. Thanks, Pete. Come on, Lassie. Look, Bob, Grams, Pete caught two and I caught two. Good. <laughs> We're going to have them for breakfast. Oh, there won't be time, Jeff. Put them in the ice house. You can clean them later and we'll have them for supper. Okay. There's no time to cook them now. We'll have them for supper. All right. We'd better hurry. Graham says you only got five minutes for breakfast. This is mine. Okay. I'm sleeping on the cot. Who says so? I slept on it last night. So what? Look, I don't want any trouble. No? No. Then don't ask for none. Any breakfast? Guess not. You go fishing this early again. You must remember to get back in time for breakfast. Gramps was a little put out.
thought you were up in the field with Gramps. No. You left those fish out in the sun, afraid they're spoiled. I didn't want them anyway. Well, whether you want them or not, it's a shame to waste good food. You forgot to collect the eggs this morning. I'm sorry. I'll do it now. I'd rather you went out to the garden and picked me eight ears of corn. It's almost noon. Gramps and the men will be coming in a few minutes. I'll never understand why chickens lay eggs everywhere except where they're supposed to. Get the corn, sweetie. Fighting's wrong, isn't it, Mom? As a general rule, yes. I don't mean wars or things like that. I mean, well, if a guy doesn't fight, could be because he thinks fighting's wrong, couldn't it? Could be, except a lot depends upon what he's fighting for. Even though fighting may be wrong, there, there are times when you should stand up for your rights. If you don't stand up for your rights like you're supposed to, that makes you a coward, doesn't it? Well, yes, I suppose so. That's what I thought. Forks in the barn. We won't use them this afternoon. I'm sorry. I didn't know it was yours. I, I was just collecting the eggs, and I found it buried under the hay. Why does Jeff think you're a coward? Is that what he said? That's what he thinks. What difference does it make? None to me, but evidently a lot to Jeff. I guess I didn't measure up. Measure up to what? You said there wouldn't be any questions. Why does everybody have to ask me questions? Sure, I'm a coward. You want to know why? Because I let a guy push me around. Because I wouldn't fight. And you want to know why I wouldn't fight? Here, read them. I don't want to pry into your affairs, Pete. Go ahead. You might as well know. Fighter. So good I killed a man with my fist. Now you know. I'm sorry. I'll pack up and clear out. There's no reason for that. I'll explain it all to Jeff. No. He's better off thinking I'm a coward. I wish you'd change your mind, Pete. Mind if I leave this for him? I told him he could use it. It's an exerciser. Why don't you give it to him yourself? I'll send him over. Leaving. What's the matter now? You owe him half day's wages. What happened? I'll tell you later. Jeff, dear, can you take this over to Pete? He's in the barn.
Hi. Mom said to give you your wages. Tell your mom, never mind. Here, I want you to have this. Go ahead, take it. Beat it! You better leave her alone! I don't want no mutt snooping around where I sleep. She's not a mutt and she won't hurt anything. Well, just keep her out of here. Now see what you made me do. So you're moving in, huh? Put that down. Sure. see you around here again. No, Grams! Huh? It wasn't Pete's fault. He started a fight with Lassie. Then he was gonna throw a monkey wrench at her. He had to do it. The guy can't let himself get pushed around forever. Jeff's right, Dad. Nobody can let himself get pushed around forever. You pack up and get out. Pete! Grams is gonna be awful short of help. That's right. There won't be anyone. Uh, can't get anybody either. Wouldn't you stay, Pete? If you did, you could show me how to use the exerciser. He could give you some boxing lessons, too. Pete used to be a boxer. You did, Pete? Golly. I think every boy should know how to defend himself. Don't you, Dad? Oh, yes, yes. Gosh, would you, Pete? Would you? Sure thing. We'll start tonight, right after supper. <laughs> as Jeff Miller. Jan Clayton as his mother, Ellen. George Cleveland as Gramps. And, of course, Lassie. Catfish bait. At 90 cents a pound. Now look, you can't hold meat in hot weather. You gotta cook it up. I could hold it if I had a decent electric refrigerator instead of that antiquated thing in there. Two dollars worth of perfectly good beef. Ruined. I know, but now it's too warm to get your dander up. It isn't as if we couldn't afford it, Dad. It's just, well, you are an old-fashioned, stubborn stick in the mud. Now, every other farm around here for miles has... Well, there's Tom. <laughs> Goody. Oh, hello, Tom. How are you? Wonderful. 
Uncle Ellen, and you? Just fine. Oh, and this is Melanie. Yes, dear, this is Jeff's mother. Uh... Hello, sweetheart. Oh, we're so glad you can spend a few days with us. We've all been looking forward to it, especially Jeff. Oh, Mr. Miller. Hi there, Tom. Glad to see you. Come over and meet Jeff's grandfather. Hey, it's good to see you. You have an age today. Well, good air, nourishing food, nobody nagging at me except Nellen here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is Gramps, dear. This is Melody, Dad. Well, pleased to know you, young lady. <laughs> now, darling, look, you promised you weren't going to do this. You were going to be a good little girl. Now, I don't please. want to stay here. I want to go with you. Dad, whistle Jeff up. <laughs> Not acting like a big grown-up girl now. I want to go with you. I know, sweetie, but you can't go. Now that's fine. Now please, hey, excuse me just a minute, will you? <laughs> you know, honey, I think you'll have a lot better time on the farm here than you would go on with your dad. You see, you can go fishing and swimming with Jeff, and uh, maybe we can rig up a hayride. Was you ever been on a hayride? Well, you've got a treat coming. Going on a hayride is funnier than a three-eared mule. I give her everything she wants, yet she's completely unhappy. Maybe you can tell me, what more does a ten-year-old need besides a nice home, a governess, toys by the dozen, uh, pretty dresses, a... Uh... Love and affection. Feeling of being wanted. Well, you know I love her and want her. I could just as easily have let her go to Europe with Henrietta, but I fought like a bull to keep her here with me. I know it, and you know it. Tom, does she know it? Well, does that make her destructive? Destructive? In what way? Well, she seems to want to destroy things that other people value. Like last week at school, she deliberately spilled ink on a girl's dress because the girl said it was the prettiest dress she'd ever had. And on the way up here, she tried to break one of my favorite golf clubs because I said I might want to play some golf while we were here. What do you make of that? Well, I could make a lot of that, Tom. But let's see what happens the next few days. Maybe by the time you come back, I'll be better able to tell you. Right now, prepare to be demolished. Hey! <laughs> oh! She always oh. beats me. I guess four legs are better in two. <laughs> Jeff, you remember Mr. McLaughlin? Why, of course. How are you, Jeff? Fine, thank you, sir. Jeff, I want you to meet my daughter, Melanie. Hello. Oh, you're right. My hand to get your glove dirty. Uh, oh. She wants to shake hands, darling. She's dirtier than I am. Later, girl. Can I sit at the wheel, Mr. McLaughlin? Well, you bet, Jeff. Go right ahead. Oh, I've got a keen car. Tom, are you sure you can't stay for dinner? Oh, I'd love to, Ellen, but I'm late now. I've got a four o'clock appointment in Capital City. You came just in time for the big race. Every year we have a dog race at a different farm. This time it's our turn. Doc Wilson from the 4-H club runs it. He's a vet. Last year won it two times in a row. If she wins this year, we'll get to keep the trophy. Oh, oh. Here, let me get your bag. Oh. I'll take it. I know where she's sleeping. All right, Jeff. Thanks. Now, darling, I know you're going to have a wonderful time. You'll be a good girl. And if there's anything you need, you just ask Mrs. Miller for it. When are you coming back? Well, let's see, this is Saturday, probably about Tuesday or Wednesday. Melanie, please. Thanks again, Helen. Now, I hope she's not too much trouble. Oh, now, don't you worry about her. We'll love having her. All right. See you in a few days, Mr. Miller. Fine, John, fine. Bye, Mr. McLaughlin! Goodbye, Jeff. You take good care of my little girl. I will! Too. It's real easy. Gramps taught me when I was six years old. You want to see my Banty? What's that? Oh, my Bantam Rooster. He won second prize at the county fair. His name's Binky. Here. You want to hold him? No! He won't hurt you. He's tame. Look, he'll even ride on Lassie's back. See? The only reason I keep him in this pen now is because the hen's broody and he fights with her. What's broody? You don't 
know anything, do you? Oh, about a farm, I mean. I don't have to know about a farm. Nobody has to know about anything. Now, hen's broody, it, it means that she wants to sit on her eggs to hatch out chicks. Well, sort of like, sort of like when your mother has a baby. I don't have any mother. Everybody has a mother. Well, I don't. I had one, but she and my father divorced. She lives in Europe. Here, I'll give you one of Binky's tail feathers, and you can take it home with you. What's it good for? Well, it, it's pretty. And if you want me to, I'll make a pen out of it for you. I've got two fountain pens, one with my name on it. I'll show you my aunt. Mostly I keep them in my secret hiding place, but I was showing them to Mr. Silsby, so I got them over here in the barn. Where's your secret place? I can't tell you. Why not? Because if I told you, it wouldn't be a secret anymore. Here's my aunt. I want to see your secret place. You can't. Why not? I told you why not. It's a secret. Only me and Lassie know about it. What's there? Secret things. Like what? I'm not going to tell you, so don't keep asking me. You know how long it took me to catch all these ants? How long? More than a year. Who wants them? They're dirty and crawly. Ants are not dirty. They're clean. And they're smart, too. I read all about them in the 4-H magazine. They build houses and tunnels. They even have little cows that they milk. Ha, uh ha. -huh. You don't believe it, huh? I'll show you the magazine. You did that on purpose. Get out. Get out of here! <laughs> She did it on purpose. I know she did, darling. But she didn't mean to do oh, it. Oh, she did, too. She just... Well, she just took her hand and knocked it right off the bench. Uh, I'm not making myself very clear, am I? M Melanie probably has a better bicycle than you, and more toys, and certainly more spending money. But she doesn't have the one thing that she needs. And that is people who love her. Doesn't her father love her? I'm sure he does, but... For some reason, Melanie doesn't seem to think so. Well, she still didn't have to knock my aunts off the bench. Jeff, I have a, a very special favor that I want to ask of you. What? Well, Doc Wilson just got here, and the kids are all down on the field with their dogs. I want you to go to Melanie's room, apologize to apologize. her. Apologize! Apologize to her oh, for God, shouting Mom, at I her. Can't. And ask her if she will go oh, to the is that too much to ask? It's an awful lot. But? But I'll do it. <laughs> oh, darling, you're wonderful. And you know what I'll do for you? What? I'll even help you collect more ants. <laughs> You got him there, George. Hundred pounds. Figured it was too hot to load him up, you know. Right, right. Well, are we all ready? Yeah. Looks like it. Yep. Boys, you get on down to the finish line. George, you go on down there and judge him. I'll right. start him off. Now, folks, don't get in the way. Stand back over there. Don't cross while the race is on. <laughs> Get set. Go! Good girl, Lassie. Got to get your harness off here. There you are. Come on, Lassie. <laughs> now go find your daddy. She beat him up. Well, not quite a mile, but she beat him. Prince will win the second heat, then it'll be Lassie against Prince, just like last year. Now, maybe you can keep your trophy. And you can keep your Narcissus bulbs. <laughs> I'm gonna go give Lassie some water. I thought you weren't supposed to feed her water her. Just a little won't hurt, just to wet her mouth. May I take her to the barn, Jeff? Well, of course you can, darling. Run along. 
I'll go with you. All right, now sit. Sit. Stay. I'll get you some water. on a hot day before a race, you can't feed or water them too much. It slows them up. That's enough. You watch her while I get Mom's hat. sure want her to be, don't you, boy? Well, you just keep stroking her head and let her know that you're here. I'm here, Lassie. I'll need a pail about half full of warm water, George. Yes. Hey, where's the meat was in this bucket? There was a spoiled meat in there this morning, Doc. That's it. Just as I suspected. She ate that meat and she's been poisoned. Get another pail. Just how bad was that meat? Doc, I didn't know a dog would eat spoiled meat. Here, Doc. Here. Jeff, could she possibly have eaten it when you brought her back here for a drink of water after the first race? That's it! Somebody gave it to Lassie so she'd lose the race. Hold us, Dad. Melanie? Ellen brought it out and dumped it in the pail before noon. H Hello, Jenny. Ellen Miller. Listen, do me a favor, would you, dear? Call down the road and find out if anyone saw the little girl we've got visiting. Yeah, she must have wandered off. You know, I can't understand how she got to the meat. Like Jeff says, she don't eat anything unless someone gives it to her. Someone did give it to her. I think it was Melanie. 
Where is she? Well, I can't find her. She's gone. Where's she gone? I don't know. Jenny's checking down the road. Well, I'll find her, and when I do, she'll get the whipping of her life, that's all. Now, but you'll do nothing of the sort. Now, in the first place, she couldn't possibly have known that that meat was spoiled. And in the second place, Dad, she's only a child. No child or no child. She's done something that's a... Here's Jenny now. And don't you do anything. Hello? She'll be up and romping around in an hour. Jeff knows what to give her, just something light for a couple of days. Thanks, Pete. Much obliged. Yeah. Forget it, George. I think almost as much of that dog as you do. Well, car's across the road. Be seeing you. Right. I wish you could talk. So you could tell me who it was that gave you that bad meat. How is she, darling? All right now. Jeff, dear, do you remember that long talk that we had about Melanie? Well, I'm... I'm afraid she's done something else to make you unhappy. What? I'm afraid it was Melanie who gave Lassie the piece of bad meat. I hate her. Jeff, will you listen to me? Maybe this is our chance to do something for Melanie. I'd like you and Gramps to go down to the lake and bring her back. I could go, but that, that wouldn't help. I want her to know that, that you can be big enough and, and generous enough to, to forgive her for what she did. I can't, Mom. She almost killed Lassie. Please don't make me. You know I won't ever make you do anything, darling. What I'm asking is, is, is as much for you as it is for Melanie. You see, a part of growing up and, and, and becoming a nice person is, is understanding other people's faults. That's, that's why I want you to go and bring her back. I want her to know that no matter no matter what she did, that she can still have friends. And, and she needs friends, Jeff. She needs them desperately. Will you go? Oh. All right, but please stay here with Lassie. Of course I will. And thank you, Jeff. We find it. We find it. Oh, Lassie. Aren't we lucky? You have a wonderful master, and I have a wonderful son. You take the water's edge. I'll look up along the road. Okay. You mustn't think about it anymore. It's all over, darling. We know that you didn't mean to poison Lassie. Well, you didn't even know the meat was spoiled. But I did try to make her lose the race. It was a bad thing. No, I don't know about that. Maybe it was a good thing. Maybe it taught you something. May I come in? Of course. I... Wildflowers. Oh, Jeff, they're beautiful. They smell pretty. Thank you. Oh, uh, there's a friend of yours who wants to say hello. Come on in. 